So this is video one for part B of your photosynthesis lab, uh, which is about the light reactions of photosynthesis. So in this video, we're basically going to walk you through what happens uh, in this figure from your textbook, which is figure 10.18. So you don't have to write down the details as you watch this, just please pay attention and kind of see what happens during the light reactions. Just to give you a quick overview of what happens uh, in the light reactions, uh, light energy is absorbed and that energy is stored in two different kinds of molecules. It's stored as ATP and it's also stored as NADPH. Okay? So these two molecules which store energy captured from light is then passed on to the Calvin cycle to be used in the next step of photosynthesis which we'll talk about in video two. Okay? So um, instead of explaining it on paper though, we're going to explain it to you in uh, 3D actually over here. So this is my somewhat silly looking but very effective uh, chloroplast model. Okay, so just point out uh, what we're looking at here. So this whole room is one big chloroplast. Okay, so I'm inside a chloroplast right now in the stroma. But there's also one more membrane in the chloroplast called the thylakoid membrane. Okay, so that separates the thylakoid space, which is what's inside of this thylakoid membrane, from the stroma, which is the liquid outside the thylakoid membrane but still inside of the chloroplast. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the uh, linear electron transport of light reactions two times, okay? The first time I'll explain exactly what's happening. The second time, you and your team are going to say out loud what's happening instead. So you will be the commentary instead of me, okay? Um, just one more thing I wanted to point out before we get started is these uh, red balls here are hydrogen ions, okay? And you'll notice that right now, there's the same number or same concentration of hydrogen ions outside of the thylakoid space in the stroma as inside the thylakoid space. Okay, so there's 10 hydrogen ions in the stroma, 10 hydrogen ions in the thylakoid space. All right, that's gonna change as we do this, okay? So, to start off the light reactions, the first thing that happens uh, is light is captured, okay? So this is photosystem two, and there's many pigment molecules here that already absorb light. So when light of the correct wavelength hits one of these pigments, it causes these electrons to rise to a high energy state, okay? Now this is quite unstable, so it's not gonna stay up there for long. It's gonna drop back down, releasing its energy, but then that energy can be passed on to the next pigment, and that electron goes to a high energy state. And again, as it drops, the energy is released to the next pigment, to a high energy state, and this continues until the energy is passed to the chlorophyll A molecules, okay, in uh, P680 um, reaction center complex of this photosystem. Okay, so it's a special chlorophyll A pigment molecule. So this high energy electron doesn't just drop down, instead it actually gets passed over to the primary electron acceptor. Okay, so instead of holding it up here, I'm just gonna use this to help you hold it up here. Okay, so high energy electron got passed, oxidized away from P680 chlorophyll A to the primary electron acceptor. From here, it's gonna go down the electron transport chain. But before we go down the electron transport chain, I just wanna point out that since this was oxidized, it's now missing an electron. We need to replace that electron, otherwise this is only gonna happen once or twice and that's it, there's no more electrons, okay? So to replace that electron, we have to split water. This is where water comes into the equation. So when water is split, it becomes, there's one oxygen that got released and two hydrogen ions get released into the thylakoid space. And two electrons are also released as well. So these electrons replace the ones that were lost by this uh, process, okay? So this high energy electron um, is going to go down the electron transport chain. As it does so, it's going to lose some of that energy, and that energy is going to be used and stored for making ATP later. So this electron is passed from the primary electron acceptor to plastoquino, okay, one of the carriers of the electron transport chain. And as the energy is released from the high energy electron, hydrogen ions are transported from the stroma into the thylakoid space. Okay. So the electron gets passed from there to the cytochrome complex, then to plastocyanin, and finally to photosystem one, okay, where it replaces an electron that was previously lost from the P700 chlorophyll A molecules here. Okay? Um, so at this point, the electron has lost most of its energy, and so we need to excite it again using light captured by one of these accessory pigments. And again, the energy is passed from electron to electron, from pigment to pigment, until it gets to the reaction center complex, to the special chlorophyll A molecule. 
So this high energy electron is then passed on to the primary electron acceptor. And from here, it's going to go down to another electron carrier, to ferrodoxin, which takes the electron and passes it on to NADP+. So notice that this time, we're not using up this energy. Okay, we're not doing a transfer. We're keeping this electron at a high energy state. Okay? So what NADP plus does, uh, NADP plus reductase does, is it takes NADP plus and it reduces it. Okay, it reduces it by adding electrons. So NADP plus takes two of these high energy electrons, okay, and one hydrogen ion from the stroma to form NADPH. Okay? So NADPH is a high energy electron carrier. And these high energy electrons will later in the Calvin cycle be used to make the precursors for glucose. Okay, so these electrons get put as high energy electrons into glucose. Okay, so this is one important product of the light reactions made. All right, so we're going to do this one more time, but this time I'm going to get you to explain what's happening. I'll ask a couple little questions along the way, but as I pause in each step, you as a team should be saying out loud, just yelling out loud. Okay, not yelling, just saying quietly out loud to each other. Uh, what's happening in each step. If you need to, you can pause the video. If you can't remember, what is that thing again? What's happening? You can just pause it, talk amongst yourselves, say it out loud together, and then keep going from there. Okay, so I'll just do it one more time. Hey, Kevin, I have a question. Yep. Is there a difference between a hydrogen ion and a proton? Yes, there is. So a hydrogen ion is positively charged, okay? Whereas a pro... Shit. <laughs> there isn't, is there? So, Aaron who's holding the camera just tricked me. A hydrogen ion and a proton are the same thing. If you think about it, a hydrogen, stop laughing. <laughs> a hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron, if it's neutral, right? One positive, one negative, right? If we take away that electron, for example, if the electron got taken by the oxygen, right? It would become just one proton with no electron, okay? So a hydrogen ion is just one proton by itself. Okay, so thank you for that. Thanks, Gavin. I hate you. <laughs> okay, anyways, so moving on. Um, so I will kind of mine through the steps, maybe ask a few questions along the way. You guys pause when you need to and explain what's happening. Okay? So, in the beginning, there was. Okay, so talk amongst yourselves. So, so far we've made two NADPH, and if you look carefully, you'll notice that we now have way more hydrogen ions inside than outside of the thylakoid membrane, okay? So, what I want you to do right now is pause, well, not, not quite yet, is when I say pause, um, talk to your group and think of the three different ways that 
we created this hydrogen ion gradient. So remember, we start off with 10 balls outside, 10 balls inside. We now have a higher concentration of hydrogen ions inside compared to outside. Okay? So um, there's three different ways that, that happened. So pause the video now, talk about it, come back. Okay, welcome back. So, uh, so the three different ways that this hydrogen ion gradient was created. Uh, the easiest and first way that you probably came up with was active transport as the electron went down the electron transport chain. So as that energy from the electron transport chain was released, we actively transported hydrogen ions from the stroma to the thylakoid space. Right? So that obviously helps you create a difference in concentration, a concentration gradient. Uh, second way was when we split the water. So notice when we split the water to make oxygen, we released two hydrogen ions as well. Okay? So that is now found inside the thylakoid space. Again, increasing concentration inside. That's another way. Third way was over here. And this one, if you guys got this, then great job, because most people don't get this, is when I made NADPH, I needed an H. So I took a hydrogen ion away from the stroma okay, to make NADPH. So that, again, reduces the concentration outside relative to the inside. So now we have an even bigger difference between the inside and outside of the thylakoid membrane. All right? So this is stored energy, right? All of those steps stores energy in the form of a hydrogen ion gradient, okay? So since these hydrogen ions are all packed in here and wanting to move out, we can use that energy to make ATP, okay? The other molecule we need from the light reactions. So as these hydrogen ions diffuse out through this enzyme called ATP synthase, it takes ADP, okay, adenosine diphosphate, and adds an inorganic phosphate group to make ATP, okay? So it takes the exergonic reaction, the exergonic process of hydrogen ions moving out to fuel the endergonic process of adding the third phosphate group to ATP. So these ATP molecules, along with the NADPH that we made here, and they go to the Calvin cycle, which we'll cover in video two. Okay, so uh, take some time, discuss the questions from video one, talk about it with your TAs and your checkpoint conversation, then I'll see you in video two. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin, that was fun. Thanks, Aaron. <laughs>